All right, hello everybody, this is John Meadows, and today is April the 12th, uh, 2016, the day after my birthday. So I told you I'd do three more questions today, and um, I have a ton of awesome questions here. It's really hard to narrow down to three, but uh, I've picked three out. This one is from Hannah Victoria. Uh, crap loading, I use the word crap. I don't like to cuss on social media, pretend I'm a tough guy, because everybody knows I'm not a tough guy. Crap loading for a carb up compared to carving up with clean, dense carb sources. Um, what if somebody's used cheat meals? Basically, what, what's my thought on peak week and just uh, crap loading or whatever? So first of all, whatever you're thinking about doing, you have to practice it. You, have to, you can't use the show as your uh, determination whether it's gonna work or not. So that means you need to be really, really lean two weeks out. Most people, I would say over 90% of competitors just aren't lean enough to even consider this approach. And then there's probably another percentage of competitors that they're eating foods they're not used to, just shoveling a bunch of crap down, uh, blow their stomach up. And, and when you also combine not drinking any water, um, not eating any sodium initially, and then throwing in all this food, it just leads to gastrointestinal distress. So I will say it does work for some people, but I don't think it's um, is, it works as well as a lot of people think it does. It's a little unpredictable, but I do think it is worth trying. There have been some coaches that have done a really good job with this. Skip is one of them. So if you're going to use this method, at least try it a couple weeks out and get lean and um, monitor everything you're doing very, very closely. You're going to have a really hard time getting this to work if you're not taking in any fluid. So you've got to find the right balance with water. And um, anyways, that's my short thought on that. Okay, next question I'm going to take is um, from Pierre Luke. He says he's on a bulk and sometimes it works long hours. And um, he really, basically what he's saying is he doesn't really have a lot of time to eat, so he's eating like one larger meal in the evening. Um, and is this okay? A lot of people will tell you that it's at the end of the day, it's just how many calories you've eaten. So have you eaten 2,500 calories in two meals versus 2,500 calories in six meals? Um, I believe there's probably uh, a good number of meals for most people, probably four meals, maybe five. Um, maybe for some people six, but I don't personally like this one or two meal business. Just because you eat all your calories at once or in two meals doesn't mean your body is using it all. I mean, just because you eat, you know, say for example, 500 grams of carbs in one meal, that doesn't mean that's all going to the right place and you're storing it all as muscle glycogen. You don't have an unlimited amount of enzymes to do this in a real fast amount of time. So I feel like, um, I don't care that you're eating the food before bed, but what I do care about is that you're eating all most of your calories right before you go to bed. Um, I would probably find, try to find a way to maybe work in a couple shakes during the day, something real easy, just to spread out the calories a little bit. But don't be afraid of eating at night, but I wouldn't save the night for all your calories. You just, there's, I, I think in the long run too, that's probably gonna do some things to your metabolism that you don't want. Um, Next one is from Vanya. How do you balance full-time work, being an entrepreneur, having a family, and keeping in shape? Any, any advice for somebody who's struggling with time management? <clears throat> this is very difficult. And um, I don't know that I have a good answer for this, but here's what I would say. Write down what your priorities are and get, a, get an understanding of your priorities. Now, if your number one priority is your family, figure out things that you're going to do with your family. I'll give you an example. We, uh, my wife and I go out on dates on Saturday night. We go to church on Sunday. We have some other activities during the week that we do. We actually work out together. So to look at your top priority. Make time for that top priority. Then look at your second priority. Make time for that. Just go through your priorities and make time and schedule it in. And make it become part of your routine. If it becomes part of your routine and part of your habit and you don't really have to think about it, the next thing you'll know, you'll be doing it. So it's a really, really tough thing to do, but if you really just build it in and make it part of your life, it's not so tough. But to do that, 
just pen and paper, list the priorities, and then list of how you're going to give time to those priorities. Start there, and I'll bet you anything you'll get better at it. So there's your three questions. Um, we'll do this again next week. Thanks.